Good morning. Hope you guys had a great evening yesterday. This morning, before we get started with our Bible lesson, it'll be lesson 107. I want to pray this morning. Hopefully, our video uploads quickly today. Had a little trouble with it yesterday, and here recently, I've had some trouble with things uploading quickly so that I could post them for you guys. So, let's get started. Father, I thank you so much for each and every student, Lord. I thank you, Father, for their families, Lord. I thank you for all the hard work that they're putting in right now, God. I ask that you would bless each and every family today, Father. I pray, Lord, that you would anoint me to teach your word today, Father. That I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to receive what you would have for us today in this lesson. Father, I plead the precious blood of Jesus over my family, all of my students, their families, Father God, Lord, over our school and all the families represented there today, Father God, Lord, in our nation. I ask that you would just help us, Lord, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. All right, so this morning, guys, lesson 107, and it's titled Simon Peter Restored. And before we get started, I'm going to go back to 2 Timothy, our memory verse, 2 Timothy chapter 20, verses 20 and 21. And yesterday I went all the way back to um, verse 19, but I'm just going to go to our actual memory verses for today. But in a large house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. All right, so Simon Peter Restored, Lesson 107. And I'm going to read this morning a little background information. They usually give us some background information, which is, which is nice. It just helps us um, as we get into the study this morning. Peter's Denial of Christ. The night before Christ was crucified, Peter lied three times by denying that he knew Christ. That was Matthew 26. And actually, we just we recently talked about this, of course, like I said, I, I skipped ahead so many lessons so that we could um, talk about uh, the resurrection of Christ, talk about those things um, during, around the time of Easter. Um, so we actually had just talked a little bit, a little bit about this. So that was in Matthew chapter 26, verses 69 through 75, and it talks about that. And uh, Jesus even told, told them this was going to happen. Post-resurrection appearances of Christ. One of Christ's post-resurrection appearances. So, um, well, after the resurrection, his appearances before he ascended to heaven. That's what it's talking about. Um, it was to his disciples at the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. We do not know for sure why the disciples went there, but the most likely explanation is that they had followed the Lord's instructions to meet him in Galilee. That was Matthew 28, 7, verses 7 and 16. And we're waiting for him to show up. Um, okay, John chapter 21. And I'm just going to give you a brief overview of that um, in our, for our lesson today instead of reading the entire chapter. But John chapter 21 is where you'll find this today. Um, what was Peter's answer when Jesus asked if he loved him? So this has happened, this story, if you could say it that way, this account is happening after Jesus's resurrection, but before his ascension, because he came back, he ministered to his disciples, um, before he ascended into heaven. Okay. After that's why it's called post resurrection. So that's what's happening here. And this was at the Sea of Galilee. So just listen carefully. Back at the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias, Simon Peter decided to go fishing again. John and several other disciples went along with him. They fished all night, but caught nothing. The sun was just beginning to come up when someone from the shore called to them. He asked whether they had caught any fish. After they said no, he said, cast the net on the right of the boat. He assured them that they would get some fish there. They did what he said and caught so many fish that they couldn't pull the net into the boat. 
It's the Lord, said John to Peter. Realizing who it was, Peter put out Peter put on his outer garment and jumped into the water, even though they were only about a hundred yards from the shore. The other disciples came in the small boat and dragged the net the net full of fish to the shore. There they saw that Jesus had some bread and was cooking some fish on a fire of coals. Jesus asked his disciples to bring some of the fish that they had just caught. They had a huge catch of 153 fish, but amazingly, the net hadn't torn. This is in John 21, verse 11. Jesus invited the disciples to have breakfast. Then he gave them some fish and bread. By this time, they had all recognized him. This was the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after his resurrection. After breakfast, Jesus asked Peter whether he loved him. Even though Peter said yes, Christ asked him two more times. Peter was grieved that the Lord asked him three times, but each time Peter answered that, answered that the Lord knew that Peter loved him. And each time Christ told Peter to minister to God's children. Even though Peter had denied the Lord, Peter could understand that he was now restored to fellowship with God. Christ told Peter how Peter would die. And then he commanded Peter to follow him. Peter asked about John. But the Lord said that Peter shouldn't be concerned about John. The Lord just wanted Peter to be willing to fulfill God's purpose for his life in preaching the word of God. And once again, Jesus told him, follow me. Now, when did John point out that the person on the beach was the Lord? When did they recognize who it was that was on the shore waiting for them? Well, after the man on shore told him to cast to the right of the boat or on the right of the boat, and they had this huge catch of fish after they hadn't caught anything all night. They had fished all night, caught nothing. Okay. Once this happened, they realized it's the Lord. And Peter didn't even wait. He put on his outer garments, it says, and he jumped into the water and went to the shore. He couldn't even wait. What do you think Peter showed by throwing himself into the water? Okay, I just say, Peter couldn't wait. He had to get there. Could it have been because he was so eager to see Christ? This is the third time Jesus had appeared to them since his crucifixion. Okay, and then his subsequent re resurrection. This was the third time. So, could it have been that Peter was so eager to get there? What do you guys think? Peter's desire to be with Christ far outweighed his desire to take care of his new, his new wealth, if you could say it that way. Because, remember, people didn't, it's not that people didn't have money, so to speak, or money wasn't being used. But people measured wealth differently than we do today. It was more of what you had. Um, a fisherman would measure wealth by um, continually bringing in large catches of fish that they could sell at the market or trade for other things that they needed, that type of thing. Uh, it would be people who had cattle or, you know, sheep, that types of thing. They looked at that type of wealth, okay? But even though Peter had, had just had this huge catch of fish, he was more concerned with getting to Jesus than he was with taking care of that, of that catch of fish, that was more important to him, getting to Jesus. What did Christ do for his disciples? Okay. He providentially, big word, and abundantly provided fish for them and prepared breakfast for them. So Christ, after his resurrection, appearing to the disciples the third time, called to them, told them to cast their net. They caught fish. They come ashore. Jesus has made has, has bread and fish. He has a meal prepared for them already before they even got there. Okay, so he provided for their basic needs. And what did the Lord instruct Peter to do? Christ was physically feeding him, but he had fed Peter spiritually um, for all the time that they had been together, for those three years, maybe a little more, that they had, that, that Peter had seen Christ minister. And he instructs Peter to feed his sheep, to feed his 
people spiritually feed his people okay the people of god how did christ show his mercy towards peter well by choosing to use him after he had denied christ see I like the, the title of this lesson. It says, Simon Peter Restored. Because that's what that's what God does. That's what Christ does. He came to restore us. He came to be that perfect sacrifice for us so that we could be restored. So that we could be in right relationship with Jesus Christ. With God. Okay? Through Jesus Christ. But that's what he came to do. Peter denied him three times. Lied. Lied. And said that he didn't know. He didn't know the man. Okay, Peter asked, Peter asked. Peter even said, I'll, I'll follow you even unto death. But what did Peter do? Lied three times. Just like Jesus said he would do. Denied him. But Christ loved Peter. Loved Peter. And Peter would end up dying. He would be martyred later for the cause of Christ, because he preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, because he refused to stop preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know what? Sometimes we have to go through that. Sometimes we have to do, we have to have that. All of us fall short. All None of us, none of us. It says our righteousness is as filthy rags, okay? None of us are good enough to go to heaven. None of us are good enough. We're not. Without without accepting Christ as our Savior, without that blood of Jesus, we cannot go to heaven. We cannot. Right? Salvation is not possible except through Jesus Christ. I don't care who says it. I don't care who in, in Hollywood or whoever says that there's another way. There is only one way to heaven. There's only one way to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. And here, Peter God was so merciful. Jesus was so merciful. He loved Peter. And even after Peter denied him, he, Peter experienced restoration. Yes, Peter would later die for Christ. But where do you think Peter is today? Okay. So Peter still received that reward. It wasn't here. But it was in heaven. Now, we read on. What connection can be made between the huge catch of fish, the breakfast that Jesus prepared, and the Lord's command for Peter to minister to God's children. Okay. Well, we know that God that God plans, leads, provides, strengthens, and controls. We know Jesus provided the catch. He was the one who told them where to cast their net. They did, even though they had cast there before, that, that night before. I'm sure they had cast there before. But what they needed was provided. Okay leads, provides, strengthens. Okay? Is God the same today as he was that day? Yes. I was the same yesterday, today, tomorrow. He'll always be the same. God never changes. People change. But God does not change. What does that mean what does that mean for God's children today? Well, just like he provided for people then he provides for us today he has a plan he has a purpose for us we need to seek that plan and purpose for our lives because every single one of us was born for a unique purpose that only we can fulfill okay that God had a plan for for me that nobody else can fulfill but me okay what was Peter's answer when Jesus asked if he loved him his answer was yes I thought it was interesting that Peter denied him three times. Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? Okay, and it almost had upset Peter, but Peter was, I think Christ did that for, for Peter to understand. You know, to ask him truly, do you love me? Do you love me? And it wasn't just any kind of love. It was that agape love, that self-sacrificing love you know, do we have that type of love for one another? Do we have that type of love for Jesus? Do you love Christ? Do we? So, I want to leave you guys with that question today. Restoration is possible for all of us. All of us. So today, have you made that choice for Christ? Have you, have you denied him? 
do you wish to serve him? Do you wish for that restoration? Do you have that restoration already? So today, thinking about that, I'm going to pray and we're going to close. But if you have not made the decision for Christ, I encourage you today, make the decision. Make the decision. Okay, Jesus restored Peter. He restored Peter. Okay, and Peter made some very rash decisions, not just the denial of Jesus. But I encourage you today, make, make that decision today. So let's pray as we close. Father, I thank you so much for your lesson, God. I thank you so much for restoration. I thank you for the salvation, for salvation through Jesus Christ. I ask today, Lord, if there's anyone listening to this message today, Father, that if they've not made that choice to serve you, Father God, that today would be the day of salvation for them, Lord. Restoration, Father God. Restoration today. Just as Peter was restored, we can be restored. God, I ask that you would give us a great day today, Father God, Lord, and I ask that um, you would bless each and every person listening to this. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen.